thanks for joining me. I thought I would give you uh, a general sense of how I approach um, some of these creative projects uh, where I envision, you know, a design for a uh, folklore creature or a monster or something like that. And my approach is uh, to treat it sort of simultaneously like it's a design issue for, that a fine artist or an illustrator would tackle, um, but also as a kind of intellectual puzzle, you know, somebody in the humanities, uh, somebody like myself who has training in philosophy, or I suppose somebody in psychology or an intellectual historian might look into the folklore of monsters. So the first thing I do is um, a lot of research. And if I get excited about an idea, then I'll dig into, you know, I have a huge library both here at home and in my office down at the college. And so I'll study, um, I'll read um, as much historical stuff as I can about werewolves, let's say, or sea creatures. And I'll try to dig into the material that's there in history books. Um, I love all the movies that you love, but also um, if you dig into the actual uh, stuff that a Roman um, historian like Plutarch actually said about werewolves or about sea creatures, it turns out it's actually even more interesting or as interesting as anything Hollywood could produce. And uh, I'm here at my desk in uh, my living room, which I've sort of commandeered as an art space. I have a pretty small apartment and uh, I basically like set up with books and I usually work in uh, sketchbooks uh, to develop my ideas. So what I'm looking to do is basically uh, explore the research through books, but then I need to think of it in terms of idea development and also image development. And those are related obviously, but kind of two different steps. So here's just some random, here's a uh, sketchbook for example, I like to fill it up with um, you know, pencil drawings, but also, uh, you know, I started to get into, to, oh, like my ideas will go, you know, I'll just sort of scrawl ideas as I'm going. So it's a wonderful combination, some charcoal drawing. This is a charcoal drawing I was playing around, trying to develop ideas for Hercules. Uh, but then, as I started to get into the idea of creating a sort of monsterology, oh, this is kind of a fun one, uh, I was thinking about monsters and cryptids and cryptozoology like um, Loch Ness Monster or um, obviously something like uh, the Yeti or, um, <clears throat> you know, Bigfoot. And so I was playing around with ideas and so I would draw and then paint over it and redraw, trying to get a feel like this. I'm pr fairly happy with this drawing, uh, mostly uh, because of the mood that it captures. Like I really did try to, I was trying to convey this kind of experience that I've had, you know, around dusk, you know, up in uh, northern Wisconsin, let's say, um, and you're just sort of uh, out and about, and it's both beautiful but also vaguely ominous, you know, you can imagine, you can sort of you hear sounds that you don't recognize and, and hear rustling uh, off in the distance, and so I was trying to capture sort of a, a, a mood or experience rather than, you know, try to do something that, uh, you know, like a work of realism. And so what I'll do is I'll sketch ideas uh, in this book, and you'll see me, I suppose, this is kind of a good one, yeah. So over here I'm like doing a bunch of just little sketches, and then I get this idea, you know, and I see a way to develop a kind of image. Uh, this is a, a creature that occurs in one of the oldest uh, books that we have, um, basically the Epic of Gilgamesh. And in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the characters uh, of Gilgamesh and his friend Enkidu here uh, go into the forests, the cedar forests, and fight the monster Humbaba. And so I was just playing around with ideas and developed this drawing. I'm, I'm fairly happy with this one as well. But you can see my process, uh, some woodcuts, um, and eventually, uh, you know, I filled this one up. Well, here's one that's not too, yeah, maybe this is kind of interesting. Yeah, here's a good example. Now, I'm not so happy with this image, but you see the process. Here I'm, I'm making notes on what I might develop and the ideas I want to include. And then maybe some quick sketches. I was thinking about sort of trying to draw this uh, Native American monster, the Wendigo, as a combination of uh, an elk or a moose and an owl. And I didn't actually go that route, but I was kind of pleased with the way this turned out. 
And so this is the way I'm sort of developing ideas. And a lot, of, as you know, you, you basically come up with 10 ideas and nine of them are throwaway and one of them is a keeper. The, the image that resulted from this is kind of creepy and I, I do like it, although I wasn't entirely satisfied with the way I rendered it. But I think you can see a couple of Native Americans at a fire sort of taking it easy after a long day of, uh, I don't know what they're doing, hunting buffalo. And then, um, you know, back here quietly emerging uh, in the forest is this uh, creature, this behemoth of a wendigo, which is, a, is basically a, I, I did a lot, bunch of research once I learned about the wendigo and learned that they're connected oftentimes to cannibalism and the fears of uh, cannibalism that must have plagued people, you know, during the settler period. Um, in any case, so this is just a little glimpse into so how I start working. And, and what I'd like to do is develop uh, and show you f sort of from the ground up. Um, this first approach will be, you know, probably something like, um, I'm thinking about doing a, a couple of these uh, little posters, broadsheets, I guess. Uh, of monsters, one on witches and then one on the witch hunters. And so I th thought that might be fun to show you from conception all the way up to the fin finished realized process. The, one of the first things I do is look at the history of witches and try to understand, um, you know, there's kind of a, a common story, but also a more interesting story. And this is an image by the great Albrecht Dürer, the um, German engraver. And you can see from that image that uh, witches are riding goats. There's always been this interesting association between goats, Satan, and witchcraft. And the story there, I think, is complicated. It involves, um, you know, really ancient Greek and Egyptian ideas that are basically called hermetic philosophy. Uh, and goats are sort of a symbol of this pagan philosophy, pre-Christian. But I thought, well, I better learn how to draw a goat um, if, and try to work it into this drawing somehow, or at least uh, I thought it might be fun to give that a try. So I just started sketching a goat. Goats, you know, in the ancient world, in the medieval world, and up through the Renaissance, they were thought to be the most uh, lusty creatures. So they were, it was believed that they were driven by uh, uh, a need for sex and that they were constantly having sex. And of course, this is a bogus kind of natural history, but these kinds of legends, you know, they they basically get replicated over and over again in the stories. So I thought it would be kind of fun to do a, a witch riding a goat in the same way that Albrecht Dürer did, but, but sort of give my own spin on it. So here I'm just using pencil and sketching, and you can see I've been thinking about, uh, just above this little sketch, I've drawn a hammer um, and a little broom. And this is, I'm sort of referring to the ancient, or rather the Renaissance um, witch hunting manual called Malleus Maleficarum, which means the hammer of evil or the hammer of the witches. And this was a witch hunting guide that was basically um, uh, developed by the Pope at, through one of his, um, you know, minions uh, named uh, Heinrich Institoris. And there's been this long history then of uh, sort of chasing after witches, the church saw them as heretical. And I want to sort of try to bring some of that into the drawing as well. Uh, a lot of times you see witches that are kind of uh, stereotypical, angry old hags. You see a lot of this starting in the Renaissance, sort of Shakespeare's time and up to the present. I thought I should try to draw one of these classic Wizard of Oz type uh, witches. and. Um, it was kind of it was fun to do it, but then I, I realized uh, I really wanted to harken back to an older notion of witches that goes back really to the pagan period, and this was a more positive view of women that were really witches were more like uh, shaman and they were considered in a positive manner in the ancient world. You have to think about witchcraft as being sort of good magic and bad magic um, in the hermetic tradition. Uh, people could use magic for the good, they thought, and also you could, you could use magic for the wicked stuff. And in the modern world, magic, uh, witchcraft got associated entirely with the negative stuff because it got associated with the devil. That didn't really happen until um, Institoris wrote this 
witch hunting manual called Malleus Maleficarum. And uh, the idea there was instead of women being powerful and understanding things like midwifery and herbs and medicine and possibly even being mystics and connections to the, to the other world, they got demonized. And Institura said, well, women are weak and vulnerable and uh, therefore they're, they're kind of easy prey for the devil. And this is because that they were, uh, you know, women in a patriarchal society, women are associated with desire and lust and eros. And, um, you know, from the ancient Greeks all the way down to the present, desire and lust is a kind of possession. It overcomes you, makes you do things you don't want, ordinarily want to do. So all of this got wrapped up into the, into the modern notion of a, of a witch. So I decided I would draw a witch riding the sabbatic goat, but she'd be kind of a, in a sexual ecstasy, and she'd be vaguely beautiful or at least uh, erotically charged. And um, I'm trying to sort of harken back to this earlier notion of witches. Um, I think for many men in the patriarchal society, female desire was considered sort of monstrous or frightening, albeit uh, also attractive. And I mean, all of this, a lot of things changed in, in 1692 is when you got the Salem witch trials and there was a Puritan min minister named Samuel Paris and his daughter and niece, they, they fell into convulsions while they were playing a game. And very quickly, like within two weeks, uh, there were nine or 10 other girls also having visions and convulsions. And then um, under some duress, these girls named three witches that may have cursed them. One was Tituba, and this was their household slave. The, the other was Sarah Good, and she was a beggar. And thirdly was Sarah Osborne, and she was a widow. And there was some rumor that she may have had an affair with one of her servants. So these were marginal character and sort of easy targets for scapegoating. And this witch hunt then spread uh, to many different villages. Ultimately, there were 200, 200 people accused of witchcraft. And I think, uh, I think something like 19 or 20 people were actually killed during this uh, witch purge. So let me catch you up with what uh, has been happening here with the drawing. Um, I basically took that uh, drawing that I had finished with uh, colored uh, pencils, Prismacolor, and then I mixed a wash of purple uh, and tried to darken it um, with some burnt umber and a little bit of black. And then I also added a, an extender, a matte finish, and mixed that all together. Then I used a roller and uh, basically rolled that layer over the drawing. And that's a tricky move because if you, have make, if you make that layer too, um, uh, too opaque, you're going to lose your drawing underneath it. And so it's, the trick is to make it just translucent enough that you can see your drawing underneath and then you start teasing it back out. Uh, and so uh, what I'm doing here is essentially adding um, colored pencil to, to try to draw in some of the detail. And I'm also adding additional acrylic washes to try to get some contrast. And then you'll see after, I'm, after this sort of phase, I go back into it with acrylics. And it's really just going back and forth, trying to get the look and the feel that I'm after, which is I want the thing to sort of be broken up and organic looking and not too precise, almost like, um, you know, it's, you've, you've seen something in the middle of the night and maybe you're a little bleary eyed and confused. Um, and so I want it to have that quality. Okay. Sometimes the uh, image is so uh, refined and uh, obscure that I need these very sexy magnifying glasses. So I wear this headset, oh yeah. And uh, basically it allows me to see what I'm doing at this very small level. And um, sometimes, you know, it's, uh, I'm trying to find a line and it's obscured by the paint or just the detail is too much for me. So I've got to use these babies, yeah. All right, I think uh, I'm all done here. At least um, I'm satisfied enough to stop, and that's kind of important is to know when to stop. Um, at the top here, I'm going to be adding, you know, a little slogan or my title it says Monsterology by Stephen Asma, 
and then down here will be a little text about uh, the sort of philosophy and history of wit witches, a little bit of like what I just presented here in this video. And, um, and then I'll probably make this available on my website or something. Eventually, I, I might compile all these together into a book form, but at least you can see. I'm happy with how the, uh, the goat turned out here. I got a lot of nice texture, I think, between the foreground and the background. There's a lot of sort of accidental, happy accidents going on. So, yeah, I'm pleased. Thank you.